Hi there. It's time for a bit of a slippery topic now, which is the global water budget. Let's have a look in more depth. The balance between water being evaporated from the oceans and precipitated onto the land is referred to as the water budget. There's actually only limited water for human use. Only 2.5% of the Earth's, fresh wa Earth's water is fresh water, and of that, less than 1% is accessible for direct human use. The access and quality of water differ depending on your location in the world. It is often the, world, the Earth's geology that plays a part in affecting water availability. Water store res res resident time. The water found in the oceans is stored there for longer than the short amount of time water is held in the atmosphere. non renewable stores. Fossil water is the name given to non-renewable, untouched, ancient freshwater stores. We can find fossil water beneath deserts and in polar areas. New technology is now allowing us to access more of this water. For example, the extension of oil drilling technology and the use of satellite imagery can increase the use of these fossil aquifers. The cryosphere, which is glaciers and ice caps, is another non-renewable source as it continues to melt. Let's quickly recap that. Where can fossil water be found? It can be found under polar areas and also under the desert. What's true about the Earth's water supply? Does geology affect the fresh water supply or does it not affect it? Obviously it affects it. Do you, how much of the world's fresh water can humans use? Is it less than 1% or is it 10%? We can use less than 1% of the world's fresh water. And is there an infinite or a limited fresh water? source on the earth. There is limited sorts of fresh water on the earth. Now let's have a look at polar hydrology. Water budgets differ in tropical temperate and polar area climates. Temperature, precipitation and seasonality influence the amount of water held in different stores. The polar area is also referred to as the cryosphere, which refers to ice sheets and glaciers. There is very little vegetation due to low temperature and limited light, so the availability for plants to grow is reduced. During the winter, the ground, lakes and rivers are frozen in the cryosphere. Winter snow and ice mean that 85% of the radiation is reflected. Permafrost is soil that is permanently frozen. During the spring and summer, frozen water thaws in the cryosphere, causing rapid surface runoff, resulting in increased evaporation. As ice and soils thaw, biogenic gases, which are those produced or used by organisms such as methane, are released into the atmosphere. So to quickly recap that, in polar regions during spring and summer, Frozen water thaws in the cryosphere, causing rapid surface runoff. This results in increased evaporation. As ice and permafrost thaw, what kind of gases are released into the atmosphere? The answer is biogenic gases. Now let's have a look at tropical hydrology. The tropics receive a high concentration of solar radiation, and there is a lot of ocean evaporation, which causes a high rainfall. There are different characteristics of the water body in tropical areas. In the tropical rainforest, there is little seasonal variation due to the consistent temperature, high rainfall and consistent sunlight. There is high density of vegetation that collects the majority of precipitation. Around 50%, so half of the precipitation, is returned via evapotranspiration. Rainforests are able to generate their own water cycle due to convectional rainfall, which is where the forest floor is warm and so the air on the surface heats up and expands. The air rises and condenses, forming rain clouds. When there's deforestation, this reduces evapotranspiration, which in turn reduces precipitation levels and water supply, as less water is being put back into the cycle via plants. Dead will have to throw through streams and flip rivers, taking longer to cycle through. Vegetation is crucial to the area's conventional rainfall. Rainfall is essential for all rainforest life, so severe deforestation would have devastating knock-on effects for the rest of the ecosystem. Let's quickly recap some tropical hydrology facts. The high density of rainfall consumes the majority of precipitation. 50% of the precipitation is return, returned via evapotranspiration. And rainforests are able to generate their own water cycle due to convection and rainfall. Let's just quick recap all the way back to the start. Water is stored for longer in the oceans than the short amount of time it is stored in the atmosphere. Water is released into the atmosphere as ice and permafrost store. Is it gasoline? Thermogenic gases, biogenic gases, or biogenic gases? The correct answer is biogenic gases. So which process produces evapotranspiration, which in turn reduces precipitation and levels of water supply? Is it global warming, deforestation, or afforestation? The correct answer is deforestation. <laughs>